Hi, everyone, and welcome to Get Hired Live. I'm your host, Andrew Seaman, LinkedIn Senior News Editor for Job Searches and Careers, coming to you live from New York City. First, I want to ask you to introduce yourselves in the comments. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, what you're trying to do with your career. Maybe you're looking for a new job. Maybe you're looking to move up to a new position. Maybe you're looking to move into a new field. Make sure you put that all in the comments so that way people know a little bit about you. We already have so many people saying, hello, and I want to say hello to Dolores from Texas, Kelly from New York, Daniela from Miami, Ahmet from Turkey, Siddharth from India, John Paul from my home state of Pennsylvania, Rodney from South Carolina, Jennifer from Boston, Tosin from Canada, and Nicholas from Greece. Welcome to all of you. Keep introducing yourself in the comments and then connect with each other. Networking is the cornerstone of a successful job search. And one of the best things to do is to connect with other people who are looking for work in your same area of expertise. Maybe they're looking for work in your area, or maybe they're looking for work at a company that you have a connection with, or they have a connection at a company you want to work with. Or maybe you just have common interest and want to job search together. Some of the best notes I get after these shows are from people who end up job searching or planning their careers together. So make sure you're making those connections, introducing yourselves, and of course, asking your job search and career questions, because we're going to be taking those in just a little bit. We have a really great guest today, and I want to bring onto the screen Rona Pierce, who is the founder of How to Level Up. Welcome, Rona. Hi, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us. So you are a personal branding expert and sort of a uh, expert when it comes to video production and, and using video when it comes to your job search. And we're seeing more and more of this throughout um, the labor market where people are trying to use videos to capture employers' attention or really claim their brand. So can you tell us, you know, why should people use video as part of their job search? So yeah, that's a great question. Really, video is the easiest way to get a stranger to know, like, and trust you. And at the end of the day, employers are going to hire or they want to hire people they can trust. So that's why video is such a powerful tool to use for your job search. Got it. And, you know, we have so many people in the comments. Roger from Virginia, Joseph from Florida, Durrett from Illinois, Monica from California, Andy from across the river in New Jersey, uh, Brian from New York, Harry from North Carolina, Richard from Texas, Stephen from New Mexico, and Yusuf from Panama, which I believe uh, you have some connection to. Um, yes, I am from Panama. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of people, they're searching for work. They're looking to get an edge over other candidates. So what are some ways that people can actually use um, video as part of their job search? So, yeah, I usually like to uh, tie it back to the whole know, like, and trust factor. So to, to get people to get to know you, like the LinkedIn cover stories, that new feature with the video, that's awesome. You can do a quick intro video there. You can do a video cover letter, um, upload it to YouTube. So that is the type of video that you would use for people to get to know you. Then the like factor of it, you can do like short videos, uh, like reels, TikToks. Instagram stories, YouTube shorts, those videos where you share like behind the scenes, day in the life, quick tips. Those are the types of videos that you can integrate to like get people to like you. And then the, the powerful ones, the trust videos are the ones where you would share like uh, tutorials, how to's, project walkthroughs, maybe get on a live stream like this one and interview someone, a former coworker or a former client, just so that people can get to get all that, that FaceTime and get to know you. So those are, those are ways to that, to integrate video back into your job search strategy. Yeah. And I, I think one of the things that we talk a lot about is creating content. And really video is is part of that because a lot of people think, oh, just putting up a post, maybe writing an article, but videos are also another piece of content that could be really useful, right? Yes, and they work forever. Like what I like about video is that it works even when you're not like trying. So there's videos that I've created years ago that I don't even remember I have that get comments that people reach out to me and say, hey, I saw this video about this and I have this question. So that's a powerful thing about video that isn't necessarily as powerful with written content. 
Yeah, no, that, that, that makes sense because the video is going to stick around a little bit more. It's more engaging. And I know even after I do these videos, I often see people looking at them, watching them months or even a year or so later. So it definitely has, like, as we say, more of a shelf life, I think. Yes, that's <laughs> correct. It. So for people who want to use video as part of their job search, what would you say is the top three tips for them? I would say the main thing is have a plan. Don't just turn on your camera and, and, and ramble. Have a plan about what you're going to say. And I'm not saying to like heavily script and read off a script, but have some bullet points, have a plan. The other thing is know who you're talking to. Sometimes when you're job searching, it's, it's very comfortable or it's what people go to and just try to cast a wide net that really doesn't work for, for many other reasons, but especially with video, know who you're talking to and start out your videos with what we call in the video world a hook. It's just those first three to five seconds of video is where you get the chance to capture someone's attention. So speak directly to their problems that you solve. And I think the, the last tip I would say is if it's your first time doing video, or even if you don't do it often, you're not going to be comfortable. It's not going to feel normal, but just do it anyway. Because after you do it, like with everything, practice, it just comes natural to you and it becomes second nature. Yeah. And I, I know that there are some concerns from people. And we have a question here from Tina who ask, what are the drawbacks to using videos during the application process? Because a lot of people, especially, they may feel that they might be judged for doing videos. They may be judged for how they look in videos, things like that. So what would you su suggest to people who have those concerns? I think that's where having a plan comes back to. Um, and yes, definitely have a good background, like a, a clear background. You don't have to have like professional equipment or anything like that, but just something that would look well. Really video is more about what you're saying. So have a plan around that area. And yes, it, it is a valid concern. Some people uh, think that you, or some people, let's be honest, some people will judge you. However, what I like to say is people who judge you off of a video are the same people, they're gonna judge you during an interview, they're gonna judge you anywhere. It's kind of like you're filtering them out before they waste your time. That's how I like to see it. Got it. And um, one thing that always comes up, especially when it comes to you know images, videos, things like that, is ageism. Um, because people often they feel insecure that they're going to get judged in the labor market, especially since we know that older job seekers tend to have a more difficult time. And is that something people should be concerned about or does that fall into that um, camp where it's, you know, you're weeding out the employers that would discriminate against you? I see it as weeding out the employers that would discriminate against you. I mean, I'm in that that age range where it's harder to find a job because of ages. I'm 40 years old, I'll be honest. And it's I want people to know who I am to see me and filter out the people that are going to have a problem with me because the truth is if they don't know this up front i'm going to waste time in phone interviews and all of this and then i'm going to find out three to four weeks in that they still would have they're not going to hire me because they don't hire people my age got it yeah and also one thing that i like about video just on my personal level is that i like that you can control all the variables most of the time so you know you could keep playing with the camera if you don't like you know how you look or if um you don't like how something came out you can maybe cut it out or um add some more context or, or edit it a little bit so that's one of the things i like about doing videos is that you know you get to decide when it's ready to go live um, it's not necessarily something that is going to go live at this very moment like this video. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> Exactly. And, and for introverts like me, I think it's really powerful because most of a lot of introverts, a lot of job seekers feel comfortable with showing who they are after they've known someone for a while. But the truth is during an interview process, you really have to capture that attention, build that trust quickly. If you have videos where you can control like, oh, I, I was looking too nervous here. Let me cut this out. Let me like put your best foot forward. People, when you go to an interview, after someone has watched videos of you, they already, 
they remember and they know you as the person on the video. So even when you're nervous during the interview, it really kind of cancels it out because they remember you as the person they were excited to interview because they saw your video. Yeah, definitely. And uh, Dolores in the comments says that she loves your three-step video uh, suggestions. And we have a few other questions uh, about videos coming in, but um, you know, the, Rona has actually been on every part of the job search. She's a recruiter, she consults with companies. So if you have any questions about job searching or career advancement, anything like that, be sure to get them in the comments because we'll be taking them uh, in just a bit and because we are already taking questions actually. Um, so make sure you're getting those in. And a quick hello from uh, to Needy from Denver, Solo from South Africa, Anna from Romania, and Deborah from Chicago. Um, and, uh, you know, Rona, we have a question here that says, um, what are some best practices, for example, where do you place your script to ensure you're looking at the camera? And that's something I think a lot of people struggle with because they might have a very specific text that they want to use, but then they're like looking around and they're like, okay, where do I look? Or how does that work? How do you suggest people deal with those? So that's a great question. It's funny because even before um, jumping on this live, I was making sure that any notes that I had were in place behind my camera where I can like look at it directly and it still looks like I'm looking at the screen. But I'm not a big fan of using a script because it distract you're trying to look at it unless you have like awesome memory. It's always going to come out as you're looking at the the script and not at the camera. Now a quick tip around that is film it in little chunks. So when I when it's a long video and my bullet points don't work and I know I need a script, let's say my first paragraph or my first two sentences, I'll read that. I'll have a physical paper. I'll read the two sentences, repeat them a few times, film those like looking directly naturally at the camera, cut, then go to the next. It takes a little longer to record that way. However, if you want or need to use a script, I would say try to memorize it in chunks and deliver it that way. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea because and one of the things I always say is to make sure you are looking at the camera. So um, Kathleen was right that it, you want to be looking at the camera because if you don't, it looks kind of awkward because you end up looking like this. Um, and that's always great for video interviews too, because if you're looking at the camera, it's more like you're looking at their eyes. Um, exactly. And actually, I I have broken down and bought myself a tiny little teleprompter for $40 um, because I do videos all, all the time. Um, but uh, I don't use it that often, but um, those are available if you're making a larger investment in video um, and they could be kind of helpful. The only thing is you have to make sure you practice, otherwise it does look like you're still reading a script just at the camera. <laughs> and that is true. And there's some, there's some apps also um, for, I've seen iPad and iPhone apps that you can use that work as a teleprompter um, and very simple. I don't even remember where I got that, but it's a very simple thing that looks, it's like a mirror and you put your phone on it and then it like feeds the, the lines to you like a teleprompter. And it was, it was really cheap. It was less than a hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. The one I have is you put it, your phone on the little uh, stand and it projects on a mirror and then you just read from there. So um, they're out there. Um, yeah. And we have a question from Brian who says, do you see or foresee video resumes becoming a more common ask from employers, especially with remote jobs? Yes, I do see it becoming more. Um, I've personally been using them since 2013. And I remember back then it was always like, oh, wow she's done a video cover letter. like it, it, I was probably the only job seeker in the, or the only applicant in their pool using it. But now, and even as a recruiter, I see more and more people using it. And I see companies really buying into the idea that this could, um, you get to know more of people, you get to, to know exactly how they are thinking and how they deliver the stuff. And it's not just the interpretation of the recruiter reading the resume. So yes, I do see it um, going more that way. And just in general, everything is going that way. You've seen all social media platforms really put a focus on video this year and probably starting a couple of years back. Yeah. And um, 
Yeah, one, I guess one quick follow-up question is you shouldn't send a video resume unless it's asked, right? It depends. I personally like to send my video cover letter, which is a short, less than a minute or a minute and a half video with my applications. But it, it really depends on your comfort level and what you're doing. I think it's very powerful. Instead of writing cover letters, I do, hey, watch this video. Well, I don't say hey. I say, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I say, watch this uh, quick video with the, with a, where I share my background, um, let's chat or something like that. Just a quick message with the link. And I get a lot of clicks on that. So it's, yeah. it's helps. Got it. And Elizabeth wants to know where you post your videos. So I think that's a, it, it depends on, I guess, the type of video, right? Yes, it, it really depends. So I like to house my video cover letter on YouTube, just because I mean, YouTube has been around for so long with the videos and it, it just works. And you can always use that and send it. Also, employers aren't scared of clicking on a link to YouTube because they know it. But any video, so YouTube is like my go-to place. LinkedIn's also good. Um, and if you do like the short form videos, Instagram Reels, TikToks, those are good places. The main thing is host your video on a popular place where someone isn't going to be afraid of clicking to see it. And definitely don't attach a video file to an email that you're sending to someone you don't know. Yeah. And also, rarely if you attach a video to an email as a proper attachment, will it go through? So exactly. Even if you think it did. Um, and Stephen wants to know, when we talk about video, does it matter what it looks like, vertical, horizontal, um, just me talking or have some text with graphics? How much time should they spend editing it? Great question. It really depends on what you're wanting with the video. I like to keep the no videos, the cover letters, really simple, just you talking, because that's where you're trying to get someone to like know who you are and some text on the screen. So getting to know you, just you directly with the camera, a good clean background that doesn't distract the person and text for your call to action and your name, just so that people remember the really important things that you want them to remember from your video. Yeah. And um, we have a question here from Lisa who asked, I feel like videos are making the interview process more competitive, especially with TikTok resumes. It seems like anyone can do it. So how do you stand out? Great question. You stand out with what you say and how you do your video. That's why I'm a fan of like, most people will start their videos with, hi, I'm Rona Pierce. No, you just wasted time. Tell people something like, how does my video cover letter start? It starts with finding great employees isn't always easy and keeping them around can be even harder. Okay, so now someone who's want, who's at a company who's wanting to hire someone to help them find people is gonna like, you're gonna stop them from scrolling when they see that video. Yeah, no, and I believe I've actually seen that video on your YouTube channel um, because I do some internet sleuthing, obviously, <laughs> before the show. So I think I've seen one of those videos. And, you know, one one quick question. I, I think a lot of people hear about TikTok resumes, but those are actually very limited in scope right now because it, uh, it's basically it's like a separate website aside from TikTok, right? So it's, it's, and it's also for specific employers, right? Exactly. So yeah, I personally, and because TikTok resumes are so new and you don't, we don't know how long they're going to be around. And like you said, they're for specific employers. I stick to the, the things that have been around. So I would say YouTube always, um, LinkedIn, if you're going to do TikTok, do it on the regular TikTok. Now, if an employer specifically requests a TikTok resume, then definitely do it on that platform. Yeah. And um, we have a question here from John who asked, I guess, sort of a, the opposite of what we're talking about a little bit. It says, it, what if your prospective employer is asking for a video resume, but you don't feel comfortable? How should you go about it? I see it as then if you don't feel comfortable doing it, there's a reason and it's probably not the employer for you. So I would just move on from that one and definitely just not apply. 
Got it. And do you think, why do you think some employers would want to see a video resume instead of just the paper version? Because they see the value of it, because they want to really get to know people, um, because it's trending because <laughs> so many reasons. It really depends on the employer, the type of job, jobs that are like for training or anyone that's going to be on camera, those employers for a long time and, and more so now would want and require a video resume. Got it. And, you know, and one question, and I know we talked a little bit about this in the beginning, but I, I think it's probably good to go over that. Um, is what it, what it would the contents be of a video resume? So obviously, like you said, get that hook in there. Um, but if, if you get the hook in there, but then you're like, oh God, what do I say now? What, what would you say is sort of the recipe of, of a good video resume? I would say definitely your hook first, then take them through the story. So I like to say that your video cover letter, your video resume is the trailer to the movie of your, your background and experience. Don't read off your resume. Say, like, talk about your accomplishments. Talk about how you've solved problems, the problems that you solved, that type of thing. And always, always include a call to action. I've seen so many beautiful videos where I'm like ready to hire the person and I don't know how to contact them from their video. And I promise you, people aren't searching. Yeah. So, and oh no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so always include a call to action. So th that's my formula. Hook, story, you, story format where you're taking them through your background and how you help and then a call to action. Got it. So you don't have to sit there and basically read, you know, from 1999 to 2003, I was a sales associate or something like that. No, no. <laughs> and, and that's a common mistake that people do. Uh, your video resume, your video cover letter shouldn't, should be less than a minute and a half. I really yeah. try to get it to a minute. That's that's the sweet spot. And um, we have a question from Gianna who wants to know, are there certain industries or positions that ask for video resumes more than others? I've seen it more like the tech industry is, is moving towards that a lot. The um, broadcasting, anyone looking for trainers, like corporate trainers, speakers, definitely. But I think other industries are warming up to it also. Got it. And we have a question here from Kelly who says, I have had video interview requests that are one-sided with just questions you answer into a camera. That doesn't seem very relational, does it? No, I actually hate those. There's a, there's a difference between someone voluntarily giving you a video cover letter or a video resume and for you to get to know them and you wanting to save time on the human part of, of interviewing and having them answer specific questions. Because it's like, well, when do they get the questions they have answered? Uh, job seeking is a two-way street. Just because a company has a job and they offer it to you doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to take it. I have questions there. I have criteria that I want to do. So personally, I don't, I don't like the one-way interviews. Yeah, and and there's a chance that people who do those one-way interviews, um, the videos are actually being put through artificial intelligence, right? Because that is, there are some programs out there where the company will use artificial intelligence to analyze videos now to sort of say, is this person a fit? Will they be good at this job? Things like that, right? I've heard of that. I've never encountered it. I've never really seen any... Um, evidence that convinces me that that is happening. However, I'm not going to say that it doesn't happen. I just know that I have not experienced it. I haven't seen, I don't know anyone who uses that. And I, I, I am in this industry and I do know quite a few people that are uh, hiring. Got it. Yeah. And I assume that it's also best practice that if you're going to do that, you would need to tell them basically that, you know, you're going to be doing that with their video. Yes. Yeah. And now, we talked about this a little bit, but Dolores wants to know, is there a minimum maximum video length uh, we should strive for? And what's the happy medium? Really depends on the type of video, but the get to know you videos, the, the cover stories, the, the intro videos, a minute and a half tops. And really a minute is is the what you should be targeting for. Um, 
anything over a minute and a half, really, it just people don't watch over that. And there's tons of statistics on that just in general YouTube videos. Um, when you're doing when you're going more into like the trust videos, the project walkthroughs, the tutorial stuff like that, those can be longer. Those are two to five minutes. Some people, I mean, if it if it's a very interesting, popular topic and detailed walkthrough, people would watch a 10 minute video of it. Like it's all over YouTube when you see, I don't know, how to if you Google how to edit a video, you'll see longer video walkthroughs and tutorials of that. But it really depends on the type of video. Yeah, definitely. And we have a question from TJ who wants to know about video intros on LinkedIn. So obviously there's the cover story um, that you mentioned where you know your profile photo flashes to a video very quickly. Uh, what are other options? So you could do the cover story, maybe you could post on your profile and feature it. What, what would you suggest for something like that where you're introducing yourself to sort of the public? So that one, yes, definitely the cover story. You can also do a, a post a YouTube video and feature it on your profile. Uh, just regular post from time to time when you get a few new like connection requests and things like that. That's a good time to be like, hey, have a few new people joining. This is who I am. When you're kickstarting your your job search again, maybe after a while and you're just kickstarting it, it's a good time you can post like, hey, something relevant, maybe you solve a specific problem and you talk about in your post, in the caption, you talk about the problem that you solve. By the way, here's a video where I talk more about that and link to your intro video. Got it, yeah. And you know, for people out there, because we've obviously talked a lot about video resumes and we talked about sort of the introduction video now, and you mentioned posting things on your profile, maybe on a regular cadence, if someone says, okay, I'm a job seeker, I have an industry, but I really don't know what to talk about. And you mentioned maybe interviewing colleagues or someone like that. What are other good options for people who say, listen, I want more experience with video, but I don't really know where to begin posting? The best option for those are the learning public. So there are lots of hashtags and popular things about, I mean, if you're in tech, for example, 100 days of code, things like that. I'm not saying to post 100 videos, but maybe after a week or after a month, things that you learn, just post a video about you doing what you've learned. Just a quick like screen share in your face in the corner explaining. Things like, like that really help as far as getting ideas for content. Just try to learn something new. And just like in general, when you learn something new, you wanna share it with your friends, you wanna share it with people. And that's gonna like get your creative juices flowing as far as what to post. Yeah, and we have uh, Tess in the comments dropping some tips. Um, and she says, be prepared on your video, be energetic and wear your smile like your uniform. And what tips would you have for people? Because obviously videos, you want to be engaging, but sometimes it takes a little bit more. So for me, if you normally talk to me, I'm not necessarily this energetic, but I try to amp it up a little bit when I'm on camera because it doesn't, it takes a little bit more to go through the camera, I think. So what are your tips for people who say, you know, I, I don't want to come out as flat or I don't want to, um, you know, make bore people or things like that? Yeah, it's, it's a lot of what you said. I don't, in my daily life, I'm not like, hey, like that, like, but yes, on video, because it's it's still one sided, you have to turn it up a bit. And I'm not saying to be someone you're not. I'm just saying to be that excited version of you, because everyone has moments when they are more comfortable, where they are more excited. So that's what you present on video. You're when you're filming a video, you have to be on like if you're usually here you have to be here as far as your energy yeah and that took me some a little while to learn because i remember um when i was learning to sort of be on camera um one of my colleagues would sit next to me and sort of be like no you have to have more energy even if you feel ridiculous being that energetic it comes across on camera as a natural otherwise you just sit there and you sound very boring and it's just very sad <laughs> yes and in audio is so important so have a mic 
close as close to you as possible. Like if you're going to use a, a lapel mic or if you're going to use a, a good mic, just the audio is so important because if someone is, if you can hear someone like far away, it doesn't matter how energetic they're looking, then it looks kind of weird that the person's like, yay, and you can't really hear them. Another thing is really being close enough to the camera, the headspace. Like leave a little bit of headspace like I have here. When you leave a ton of headspace, you look tiny and small and it doesn't matter how energetic you are. You just aren't that engaging and it looks like you're far away. Like this? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and so what would you say is the number one tip for people who after this broadcast, maybe they have some uh, confidence, they want to give it a try. What's the number one thing you would suggest they do after watching this video? If you know who you're talking to, work, give it a few, like 10 minutes and work with on a, on a strong hook and a few talking points and turn on your camera and just hit record. The first one might not be perfect, but just do it. Because if you overthink it and you think about it way too much, you're never going to get a video out there. Got it. I'm back to normal height now. Uh, <laughs> um, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We had so many great questions about videos. And, um, you know, I, I think there's probably a lot of people that have a lot of confidence to do that afterward. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, just that's my thing for everyone. If you really just just hit record, just go ahead and do it. Yeah. It's, and if you do want more tips, you can follow Rona on LinkedIn and you can see her link at the bottom of your screen and obviously tagged in the post. And if you want to watch this again or you miss part of the broadcast, you would just hit replay um, at the same post because it'll be archived after today's chat. So make sure you follow Rona. And thank you so much for your time, Rona. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yes, and thank you to all of you out there who watched. And if you're feeling ambitious, I think one thing you could do after you sign off from this, do a video on your profile, do your cover story, maybe tag us in it to see uh, so we get to check it out, what you learned from today's video. It'd be great to see those. Um, but also make sure you stick around on the LinkedIn news page, which is where you're watching this video, because on Monday, May 28th, my colleague Caroline Fairchild sits down with the CEO of Levi Strauss, Chip Berg, to discuss paid parental leave and social engagement, and that's at 3 p.m. Eastern time. So make sure you stick around for that. That's Monday, the 28th at 3 p.m. Eastern time with Chip Berg, who is the CEO of Levi Strauss, which is the jeans that I'm currently wearing. Um, so make sure you stick around for that. And then we'll be off next week, but I'll be back the following week with a really special guest. So make sure that you stay tuned to the LinkedIn news page to RSVP for that. And as always, until next time, make sure that you stay safe, that you follow your local health guidelines because you can only get hired. You can only be a good candidate for a job if you're healthy and well enough to do so. So until next time, best of luck.